Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on LS Pay seamless payments across the channels. My name is Pieter Thor Sigurdsson, Product Director for LS Pay and LS E Commerce here at LS Retail. Now, before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Now, this webinar is being recorded and we will distribute the link to the recording shortly after the webinar. All participants are muted and we will have a Q&A session at the end. So as we progress through the webinar, please type in your questions in the question panel found in the attendee console and I will then read out loud your questions and answer them at the end of our session. But the topic today is LS Pay, our out-of-the-box payment solution that keeps your business up to date in a constantly evolving payment landscape. So let's begin with the basics. What is LS Pay? Well, LS Pay is an electronic fund transfer or an EFT software solution that offers you complete reliability, EMV and PCI compliance, no matter if you're selling in your store, restaurant, gas station, on or on, or on your e-commerce platform. LS Pay seamlessly integrates with our LS Retail systems and gives you the flexibility to choose from a variety of payment service providers in all of our main market regions. So in short, LS Pay is our EFT solution where we are enabling payments as an off-the-shelf solution. But what we're doing with LS Pay is perhaps best reflected through our mission statement, which is to offer omnichannel EFT integrations to the leading PSPs in each of our main market regions, allowing our customers to have a choice. Now, traditionally, EFT integrations have always been a part of the localization effort performed by our partners. So often a partner has implemented an integration to a single PSP or a payment service provider in a particular region, and then all customers have simply been locked in with that particular PSP, whether they like it or not. Now, in the past, this might have been just fine, as there often was only a single main PSP per each region. But now with all the advancements and the increased competition in the payment space, this format is fast becoming obsolete as merchants now look to payment features to sharpen their competitive edge. So now with LS Pay, our customers can choose between multiple PSPs and are free to negotiate with their PSP, PSP of choice. And better yet, they can change PSPs if at any time they're unhappy. It's basically the same paradigm as with our POS hardware. Now, we know that our solutions run elegantly on HP, Toshiba, Auris, et cetera, et cetera, and our customers can simply choose. And now the very same applies to payment service providers. Now, before we dive in, let's settle on the topology and also the terminology in our payment space. So we start with the merchant. And when customers pay with a card, they do so through a payment terminal or a PET, if we use the industry term, pin entry device. The resulting authorization request is then channeled to the payment service provider or PSP that provides the payment gateway. Now, in this diagram, the PSP is the main entity, as this is the entity that LS Pay integrates with, this is the entity the merchant will negotiate with, and this is the entity providing the payment terminals and the support to the merchant. So when the authorization request reaches the gateway, it is then relayed onwards to the acquirer or processor, which determines whether it is approved or not before the reply is then sent all the way back to the point of sale system in the store. Now, if we associate a few names with this diagram, then examples of PSPs would be ADN, WorldPay, Nets, Verifone, and examples of acquirers would be Nets, Swedbank, Elevon, Thesis, and Lantiv, hopefully naming examples that you are familiar with. So 
As you might have heard, in some cases, the same entity can be both a PSP and an acquirer, such as the case with ADN, NATS, and global payments. But in many cases, the PSP abstracts connectivity to multiple acquirers, again, providing the merchants with a choice. Now, this is often the case with US-based PSPs, uh, such as First Data, Freedom Pay, and, and Shift4, for example, all providing access to all the major acquirers, such as Thesis, Chase, Elevon, to name a few. Now, if we then turn our attention to the architecture and look at how everything interconnects, then at the very heart of things, we have the LSP engine. And then on top of the engine, we add in payment plugins where each plugin contains the integration to a specific payment service provider and knows and has the responsibility to drive the supported payment terminals and of course knowing how to communicate with the payment gateway in question. Now we are in the process of adding more and more payment plugins to the engine both to add support to more PSPs and also just to expand on our geographical coverage. Now, we then expose our LS, LS Pay API, allowing our retail and hospitality solutions access to our payment features. And speaking of our payment features, if we look at the supported features of LS Pay, then we can simply sum it up by stating that we support enough features to drive a standard retail and hospitality operation and then we are continuously working with the LS Central team to add more support for the tokenization needed in hospitality activity and hotels. And we will get back to that a little bit better later in the presentation. Now, a short note on security. It is very important to acknowledge that LS Pay is always out of scope for any PCI DSS related vulnerabilities and LSP is always out of scope for any PCI certifications. And the way we achieve this is that we only team up with PSPs that are already PCI certified and never expose us to any vulnerable data. In other words, what happens is that we simply send an authorization request to the software component provided by the PSP, and we are then completely oblivious to what is taking place on the payment terminal or to any communication with the payment gateway. It's simply a black box towards us. And when it's time, we simply get a response back from the authorization request, and the data that we get back does not contain any data that could be categorized as vulnerable. So basically, we never receive any vulnerable data, hence we can never store any vulnerable data, and hence we are always outside the scope of a PCI certification. So if there's one thing that we can take away from all of this is that retailers are never ever in scope for a costly PCI certification when deploying LSP. Let's then take a look at how our retail and hospitality solutions support LSP. Now, LSP is intended to work with all of our retail and hospitality solutions, but truth be told, we have progressed the furthest with LS Central. So let's dive in and look at our support for LS Central. Now, the key to realize here is that with LSP, we have all the platforms supported, now, whether it's the traditional point of sale or the new web POS, stationary or mobile, Android devices, iOS devices, they're all supported. So basically, if there is a platform you can run our point of sale on, it is supported by LSP. But if we get a little bit technical, let's then dive in and look at how LSP is supported on the stationary point of sale. Now, both the traditional Windows one and the new web POS. The way it works is that LSP is integrated through the hardware station. Now, the hardware station is a relatively new component that is responsible for communicating with all peripherals, printers, scanners, et cetera, et cetera. And we are simply now classifying the payment terminal as yet another peripheral. Now, 
The beauty of this architecture is that LS Central integrates once to LS Pay, and then LS Central benefits from all future PSP modules that will be added to the engine at a subsequent state, if you remember from the architectural diagram. Now, looking at the supported versions, then LS Pay is supported by default from version LS NAV 2018 and onwards, and that obviously then includes LS Central. Um, we also support older versions, stretching a little bit further back, because uh, for versions 2017 and 2016 of LSNEV, we make available a FOB file, or basically a code module in the, in the LS Central or LSNEV environment, um, that adds support for the hardware station, thereby enabling LSPay. Very important here, though, that even though that you add this FOB, you are not overwriting um, how to communicate with other peripherals. This FOB teaches the LSNAV version only to use the hardware station for payments and payments only. So you're not, as I said, overwriting all the peripheral communication for an older version. Now, if we then look at uh, LSNAV 2015 and earlier, then basically, as a partner, you are on your own there because you can simply take our FOB and use it as a blueprint and theoretically stretch the support for LSP as far back as you would like. But uh, as we are short on time here today, I'm not going to go into the details of how LSP integrates with our Android and iOS devices. Just be advised that LSP works on all the platforms that you can run our point of sale. So if you're keen on learning how we how we integrate or how we support our Android and iOS devices, then please reach out and, and I'll be happy to answer that via email. Then for the LS1 partners in the audience, then I'm very happy to announce that LS1 will add support for LSP in, in quarter four this year. Now, LS1 will incorporate support for the hardware station component and thereby gaining access to LSP. And just as we saw earlier in the architectural diagram, once they integrate with LSP, then all of our payment modules will become automatically supported in due time. Moving onwards, next to LS1. Now, we are currently developing our support for LS1. And what we are doing here is quite interesting because we are not incorporating LSP into LS First as such, but rather into the Dynamics platform itself. So what that is, we are creating a generic support for LSP in Dynamics 365 for finance and operations thereby allowing us to use LSP on F&O, regardless of whether LS First is in play or not. Now, this is a very exciting proposition that we then aim to release in quarter three, now this year. And then, last but not least, our support for LS Express. Now, LS Pay has been supported by LS Express for quite some time now. And due to the nature of the LS Express solution, we enable LS Pay via the auxiliary LS Pay app available on the Microsoft Store. Again, down to time constraints, I'm not going to dive into the details of how this is achieved in this webinar, but please reach out via email if you're keen on learning more about this. So, this was our support for LSP in our retail and hospitality solutions. But I know that many of you are keen to learn where LSP is available and which geographies and PSPs do we then have on our roadmap. So starting with Europe, here are the currently supported PSPs. If we look at Europe as a whole, we can see that we already have a healthy mix of local companies such as PayX and the Nordic branch of Verifone, along with truly international giants such as Adyen, Global Payments and WorldPay. So 
this is the situation as it is as it is today but if we revert to our mission statement from earlier then the objective of ls pay is to provide integrations to the leading psps in each of our main market areas and to give you a hint of what that vision looks like then here we do have a combined list of our supported psps along with the integrations that are currently in development plus the ones that we have identified as roadmap candidates. As I said earlier, a healthy mix of both local providers and the truly global giants. Now, as some of you might have recognized, we are also adding in support for PSPs specializing in certain aspects or verticals. And to name a few noticeable mentions, we could look at 3C with their hotel and hospitality support. We could look at Klarna with their financing options. And we could look at Bambora, specializing in the smaller merchants that might not fit into the uh, sweet spot criterion size-wise as defined by many other PSPs. Now, this is a list that has been assembled based on our views for the product and also demand from the channel. And we are very much demand driven with our roadmap. So if you have an opportunity or request for a PSP that is not on the list, then please reach out and we'll see if this could be a good candidate for our roadmap. If we then look at the Americas, then we are building up our offering in the region. Here again, we see global giants such as Adyen and Global Payments and also local offerings such as the American branch of Verifone and Moneris in Canada. And then for the roadmap, it's all about providing options for all kinds and sizes of merchants. So next in line in the US will be first data by popular demand from our channel and then 3C and Freedom Pay naming some examples specializing in hospitality and lodging. Now, on top of this diagram, I might add that we are eagerly seeking PSPs to cooperate with in South America and the Caribbean. So please reach out to us with suggestions and requests for this region. If we then look to MIA and India, then we can say that we are starting to find our feet in the region. Uh, we are releasing support for Network International, starting with support in the UAE. And we are then releasing support for Ingenico in Turkey as a part of our ongoing collaboration with a global leading sporting goods brand. Roadmap wise, so in the Gulf region, we have, ident we have identified the following PSPs for our roadmap. Uh, Network International expanding on their support, so reaching out to more countries than only the Gulf region. And then Mashrek Bank and the first Abu Dhabi Bank. Global payments will then expand on the number of supported countries with our integration, meaning that in due time more countries will be enabled, such as India. The same then applies to both Network International and Wirecard in due time our integrations will unlock part of, for example, the African continent. Uh, we have then decided on implementing an, an integration uh, to Verifone in Israel, and we are then exploring our options in other countries, especially South Africa, Egypt, and Jordan. And then turning our attention to APAC, here we have once more the global giants of ADN and, and global payments, along with support for Union Pay in China, which we are releasing as a part of our ongoing collaboration with the aforementioned leading sporting goods brand. And roadmap wise, we have identified local players such as EFTP US in Australia and New Zealand, Nets in Singapore, and Wirecard then also has a strong offering in the region, and this is also a region where ADN in, intends to grow. Uh, we have then also identified Alipay and WeChat Pay as integrations that we are keen on. This is especially valid in this region and, and globally is as well when tourism returns back to normal post-COVID-19. 
And uh, again, let me stress that we are very much demand driven with our roadmap and, and we are actively seeking recommendations for PSPs in this region. So please reach out. Uh, so on these roadmap slides, we have now seen our plans as they are today. And truth be told, it's, it's quite a list. So what I wanted to do was to give you a sense of which integrations are currently in development or have been identified as immediate roadmap elements. Again, what you're seeing here is a mix of PSPs that we have identified from a product perspective and also factoring requests from our partners and customers. So if we dive into the list, then we are creating an integration currently to Wirecard, which are especially strong in, in Europe and the APAC region. We are implementing an integration with Verifone in the UK. Uh, first data is on our radar, enabling US and Canada, and then at a later date, stretching down to South America. Optomoney in the UK is there as well, and just as we have now learned 3C as well in Europe, US, and eventually the UAE. Uh, next in line is a local flavor, the Bank of Maldives, for our customers there. Uh, we are then uh, planning on doing an integration to the latest technology stack at WorldPay, the IPC3 one, uh, which allows then a single integration to, uh, to drive all the regions that WorldPay is supported in. Uh, and as we learned uh, a moment earlier, we have decided on Verifone in Israel, Freedom Pay in US, Canada, and in Europe. Um, then Next in line, we have identified a couple of Icelandic uh, PSPs, Valetor and Borkun. And uh, the last on the immediate list is Nats, where we'll be uh, expanding on our uh, current integrations by creating a new one to their smart POS concept in the Nordics. Um, Nats are uh, launching their own version of what they call the smart pos, which uh, competes with the all-encompassing devices like the PAX A920, whereby we have the POS and the payment device all encompassed in the same form factor of the same device. Now, uh, with regards to generic features, then we will further work on our token support uh, to enable tokens in retail hospitality activity in hotels. And of course, as we learned earlier, uh, continue with your work for to enable LS Pay for F&O and LS First, of course. And this cannot be stressed enough. Our roadmap is very much demand driven. So please reach out with opportunities or requests that you might have as this can very much influence our roadmap. Now, as a part of the documentation for LSPay, you will find a PowerPoint document that we label the product information pack. The aim of this uh, slide deck is to educate our partners and customers on LSPay. And in fact, this webinar is largely based on this exact content. Now, in this product information pack, you will find a section dedicated to our PSPs, specifying details and contact information for each and every one of them. And this serves to give you the basic information about our PSPs basically whom to contact for definitive information on availability, devices, features and services, and of course, pricing. So let's look at an, an example. So here in the context of ADN, we provide whom to contact for sales and technical support, along with other key information, such as which acquirers are supported, which devices are in play, and of course, which countries are supported. Now, please note that this material is only intended to provide basic information on each PSP, and we encourage you to reach out to the PSPs for definitive and further information. Ask the PSPs, they frequently add support for new devices or new countries, and they are, of course, best positioned to pitch their own offering, highlighting what sets them apart from the competition. So, 
So as we've seen so far, the payment integrations in LS Pay are very much POS centric. That is, it all revolves around the point of sale and how we integrate with the payment terminals. So how do we then support the paradigm of unified commerce? where the customer is in the center and the complete experience is driven from a single core system? How do we seamlessly support omnichannel payments where payment tokens can flow between the channels? And how can we use these tokens? And what is it exactly that they allow us to do? So let's find out. So as with everything unified commerce, it all starts with the core solution, LS Central. Now, as a part of our unified commerce paradigm, we now have a centralized transaction repository residing on the head office level, where we accumulate all transactions regardless of their origin. Meaning that it does not matter whether the sale came through e-commerce or a physical store, all sales end up in this centralized repository, giving us a complete view of the customer's purchases. Then, in today's payment environment, many PSPs allow us to receive a token accompanying a payment transaction, basically identifying the card used, but in a format that we can safely store in our database and does not expose us to any PCI certifications. So in other words, when we do a purchase with a card, we get a token back from the PSP that we need to store in our database. And for this purpose, we have now built what we call the token vault, where we store the received tokens and how they are linked to member accounts and their transactions. So when we do a transaction on the PUS using LS Pay, the objective is to receive a token from the PSP, which then accompanies the transaction and is stored in our centralized token vault. Now, what we then what we can then do with this token is to, for example, smoothen the, a possible return of an item purchased in the original transaction. Meaning that if a customer wants to re return something from the original transaction, we can then simply retrieve the token associated with the original transaction. So these tokens can be found in hospitality to support the action of opening up a tab on the bar and then settling the bill a while later, possibly after a great meal. Here, we start by doing a pre-authorization request on the card, resulting in a pre-authorization token flowing from the PSP to the POS and being stored on the table in question. Then, when the guest wants to settle the bill, we do a full capture on the card, sending in the pre-authorization token to the PSP. Now, listeners out there with a keen ear for business processes will without doubt have realized that this concept of pre-authorization tokens and then a later full capture works equally as well with our LS activity solution, where you would need to present your card at the time of booking. And then of course, it works equally as well with our hotel solution. Again, where you present your card at the time of booking and then a full capture is performed, for example, a week before your arrival. So there are many uses. But where are we exactly in our current support of these tokens? So the short version is that LSPay supports these token functions for those PSPs that can provide them and LS Central is working on the support on their end. They are in the final stretch of supporting the base token handling and then support for returns, pre-auth and full capture will immediately then follow. Now, other examples of these tokens and their use might include uh, recurring payments, being able to periodically charge, for example, given a subscription, and of course, the ability to recognize the customer based on the payment card presented. This allows us, of course, to interact more meaningfully with the customer, maintain an accurate customer history, or even recalculate the transaction and apply specific customer pricing, should that apply. And these, these token features that I've just mentioned, they are firmly on our roadmap. But let's then add e-commerce to the picture. The same thing applies to all our supported e-commerce platforms. 
and that is that they have substantial ecosystems around them. Now, what I mean, and taking Magento as an example, is that within the Magento environment, you can find plugins and extensions by the thousands, adding extra features to the platform. So if you browse to the Magento marketplace, you will see that there are countless available payment plugins ready right off the bat for all the main PSPs found around the world. So instead of writing our own LSP payment plugins into the e-commerce platforms, we of course utilize what's already there and simply search for the plugin we need. So if we take an example using Adyen, then we simply locate the Adyen plugin in the Magento marketplace, we install it, and our deployment of Magento now knows how to get authorizations from Adyen, re receiving payment tokens and passing them back to LS Central to be placed in the token vault, just in the same manner as we saw earlier with the point of sale. Our token vault now stores the card token associated with the e-commerce purchase, and this then allows us to do features such as cross-channel returns, where we can purchase online and re return in store, again, doing a reversal on the original card. But there is one caveat here. Tokens are unfortunately not standardized between PSPs. So a token issued by one PSP will not work with another PSP. So in our case, in order for cross-channel returns to work, the same PSP must be used on both channels. That is, Adyen is the only PSP that recognizes tokens issued by Adyen. So we need the Adyen plugin within LSP to correspond against the Adyen plugin on the e-commerce platform in order for them to share the token. And this, of course, then applies to all cross-channel features where tokens are used between the channels. But next in line, what about our support for the increasingly popular, popular alternative payments? And alternative payments are simply payments that are not cash or any one of the major card schemes such as Visa, MasterCard, etc. Well, simply put, it is a jungle out there, as someone once said. Now. Here we have everything from the industry standards such as Apple Pay and Google Pay to being able to pay with your Garmin watch when you go for a run to local flavors such as WeChat Pay, Grab Pay or, or any one of the Nordic options. Uh, NFC based or QR code based, it all needs to be supported as the modern consumer is increasingly turning to these payment methods. So which of these mobile wallets does LS Pay support? And the answer is that it all depends on the PSP in question, as it is not LSP that is supporting these payment methods, but the PSP. So let me explain. Let's say that we have a transaction on the PUS for five euros. When it's time to pay, we simply send an authorization request to the PAD, and then it's simply a black box operation towards us until we receive the result from the request meaning that we have no control nor visibility on what is happening on the path during the process or the communication with the payment gateway. So from our perspective, we really don't care whether someone swipes a card, taps a card, or uses chip and pin, and it makes no difference to LS Pay whether the customer pays with a card or with Apple Pay, Garmin Pay, or Alipay, or what, whichever method. We are only simply interested in the reply from the authorization request, and it's completely up to the payment service provider to configure which of these mobile wallets are supported on the path. Now, most of the PSPs support a healthy selection of these mobile wallets in play in their regions. So again, it fully depends on the PSP in question which mobile wallets are supported. So, if you are eager to explore LSP, how do you get started? Well, first of all, 
all of this is available to you right out of the box. LS Pay is released as a part of LS Central and you will therefore find documentation in the online help for LS Central on how to work with the hardware station and how to enable LS Pay. Then please visit the LS Retail portal and take a look at the product information pack for LS Pay. As I said earlier, the product information pack contains a lot of the same material as I have covered in this session, plus detailed information on the supported PSPs. Now, in the beginning, you can of course use the mock PSP uh, supplied by default, but at some point you will need to reach out to a particular PSP, both to learn about their offering and also to just to get a test terminal. And when you have acquired a test terminal, then please view our setup videos, also found on the portal, where each video covers the needed configuration in the hardware station for a particular payment service provider. Also, please be advised that we are in the process of updating our uh, partner portal for LSPay. So an updated product information pack valid for June will be available on the portal later today. License wise then, then just please be advised that the licensing information for LSPay is found in the respective price list for each solution that hosts LSPay. Again, all located on our LS retail portal. And last but not least, if you have any questions after this webinar, then simply just reach out to us. Lovisa and I will be happy to assist with your questions, and we are ready to guide you onwards on how to get started with LSPay.